good morning. It is the third weekend of the month. It's our slow Saturday weekend, but mine has become a slow Sunday again. What is on my fluff? Yesterday was a bit busy, but um, today is all quiet and peaceful. My mom of 88 years old has been with us for a month. And um, so obviously everything happened a lot slower this month than usually because I don't have that much time for myself. Taking care of her takes quite a bit of time. Um, she came to us for a month to give my brother and his wife a break so that they could go on holiday. She uh, prefers to live with my brother. He's her little boy. She still calls him her little boy, even though he's like 60, hmm, 60 something, 63, I think. Something like that. So yeah, she's been here and she's kept me quite occupied. So I haven't made a lot of progress. When I was a teenager, I would, um, we never had stash in the house. That was unheard of. You went to the wool shop and you would buy yarn and you would use the yarn. And when you finished, only then could you buy more yarn for the next project. And I can remember as a child, I complained to my mom that I was bored with the color. And she agreed with me. She said, I know you are. You, you get bored with the color and you get bored with the pattern, but you have to push through. That's character building. So I just had to push through as a child and finish whatever I was working on. And still to this day, I have that problem. I get bored with color and I get bored with texture. And I get bored with stitch pattern. And I'm telling you, I am bored out of my silly little mind at the moment. <laughs> um, the, the cable blanket has got six panels now. This is the latest one. It's a staghorn cable that I changed it a bit to make it wider. Um, so yeah, there's six panels done. Nice fat sushi roll. And I don't know how many panels there will be. I will stop when the blanket is big enough for my bed. But it's going to be in the region of 18 or 20, I think. For me, if you make the king size blanket. Obviously, if you're making a smaller one, it's going to be far less. But anyway, so this is still going on. Luckily, my testers are very understanding. And we've all got other projects on the site that we're working on. So, well, they do. Um, if they wait for me, like now, this panel is now done, but I haven't given them the next one yet. I haven't started on the next one yet. Then they go on with other projects that they have in their pipeline and we don't hassle each other. We don't um, try to get it done as quick as possible. So because this is such a big project it, for me, it's vital that you've got to do something in between. Otherwise, I'm, I'm going to lose interest. It's going to steal my joy. It's not going to be a nice project to work on. So I don't go there. Um, I've had the crochet project in between. But I want to finish that now. So when this panel was done, I put the knitting down. And I started pushing full time when I had time on the... Uh, star stitch crochet blanket so um, this one should be finished by the end of next weekend when we take my mother back next weekend that's quite a bit of road trip time so I'm hoping to have the bulk of the blanket done by Friday evening so that Saturday in the car when we leave I can start with a border so yeah um, that's the plan I hope it works out I'm going to sit and crochet on it today with my legs in the sun, in the sunroom. And um, yeah, that's going to be my slow Sunday. Just crocheting away on the Mohanzi. Mohanzi. The name of the uh, design is going to be Mohanzi. It's named after a little baby girl, a miracle baby girl that I told you about last month. The Cable Me Cozy is going to come out whenever we do. It might still be this year. It might be next year. It doesn't matter. I'm enjoying it the way I'm working on it now with some things in between. 
So yeah, when when I started designing full time, I always worked on two things. I had a knit project and a crochet project, so that I could swap between the two when the one gets boring in terms of color and texture. So when this crochet thing is done, I am going to cast on this. I want to knit this jersey. It's been sitting in my head for a while now and this yarn has really been calling me. I think it's the third month that I'm showing you this yarn. I still haven't done anything with it and it's really, really calling out to me. So I'm going to start with this pretty soon. As soon as the crochet blanket is finished, I'm first going to knit myself a jersey and then I'll start on the blanket again. By that time, I'm okay again with the grey colour yarn. So what else is news? Well, I presented the first um, workshop with uh, Color Spun in Heidelberg. Um, I think she calls it pain-free knitting. Um, pain-free knitting, healthy hands, whatever you want to call it. So we had a workshop on knitting specifically, how to knit to prevent uh, causing arthritis because knitting and crochet are both lifestyle triggers for arthritis if you do it wrong you can cause arthritis in your hands with time so that's one aspect of it and then the other aspect of, of it is to relieve the pain if you already have arthritis in your hands how to change your knitting style how to um, what other things you could take into consideration to to alleviate the symptoms of the arthritis um, and the workshop was very well um, received the people gave us very positive feedback so I'm very happy about that so we extended the workshop a little bit we um, there's a theory part and then there's a practical part and the theory part is the same for both workshops but there's a practical part for a knitting workshop and there's a practical part for a crochet workshop so in the month of june we will confirm the dates probably today because hilda went and double booked herself anyway so we are going to have the pain-free knitting workshop in pretoria during the month of june in the valpatrand area and then in july we're going to have the crochet one in heidelberg and in August, we're going to have the crochet one again in Pretoria. So we're going to have just once a month, because I don't want to overcommit myself, once a month. One month in Pretoria, one month in Heidelberg. And then once we're finished up to August, we'll see if there's interest for more workshops. And then we'll arrange more. So if you are interested in the workshop, go and look on the Color Spun um, website. Um, because I'm partnering with Colorspun on this, she handles the bookings on my behalf. So my website doesn't have an online shop anymore and I don't want to put it back. It's just too much of a hassle. Um, I'm really not going to get it all up and running just for a workshop. So the workshop bookings go through the Colorspun um, website. And um, if you've never been to down our studio if you are in the Pretoria or Joburg or area surrounding Heidelberg it's not that big of a drive it's it's really not that far um, it's an amazing experience when I did the workshop in Heidelberg I took a friend of mine along um, she lives close to me and um, she walked in the door but i was quite a bit ahead of her and i turned around and as she came into the door you could see that she was absolutely dumbstruck her mouth literally fell open she was like because that place is it's mind-blowing i can't i can't describe it to you it's shelves and shelves and shelves of hand-colored yarn Cotton yarn, mohair yarn, merino yarn. Oh, it is every yarn weight you could wish for from fine lace through to chunky, chunky. It is just amazing. There's always coffee and cookies and it's just such a warm, welcoming atmosphere in Dana's studio. I can go there every day if, if 
yeah, it's, it's just amazing. So if you've never been there and you would like to experience it, you don't have to wait for me to have a workshop or whatever. You can just um, arrange with Donna and go for a studio visit. It's amazing. So, okay, that's the workshops. That's a bit of news. And then, of course, the 10th of June is Worldwide Knitting Public Day. Now, I'm a bit different, true to my nature. I'm always rebellious. Um, I know there's a lot of um, get-togethers being arranged for the 10th of June. But for me, that sort of defies the purpose of the day. What is Worldwide Knitting Public Day about? It's to go sit somewhere in public where people do not expect to see people crocheting or knitting and do your craft there to bring awareness. So for me to go to a pre-arranged yarn social where there's lots of yarnies and wool shops and indie dyers selling their stuff, what's the use of that? It doesn't make sense to me. So even if, if they arrange it in a restaurant, the place is going to be so crowded full of yarnies that there's going to be very little other public people that do not knit and crochet to see. So I, I'm, I'm not going to any of those. I'm still deciding which restaurant I'm going to go to. But I'm definitely going to sit somewhere in a nice cozy restaurant because we are in the middle of winter. As you can see, I've got me beanie on. It's a bit cold. Um, and obviously anybody who wants to come with me is quite welcome. It will be somewhere in the Pretoria area, in the greater Pretoria area. Uh, I want to go sit in a cozy workshop, uh, a cozy restaurant with a good menu and maybe a fireplace. And I want to sit and knit there where there are not hundreds of yarnies around, but other people that can actually see. And I want to bring awareness to the fact that the craft is still alive and well, very much alive and well. I remember one year, I actually took my spinning wheel and I went and I sat uh, in a restaurant, a very popular restaurant here in Centurion at the Irene Milk Farm. And I was spinning at my table and I cannot tell you how many people walked up to me and asked me, what are you doing? How does this work? Um, uh, and you know what people always ask is, is the, where's the pin that Cinderella pricked her finger on? <laughs> it's, it's, I think it was Cinderella. Was it Cinderella? I can't remember Sleeping Beauty, Cinderella. Oh, how I don't know. My, my fairy tales has gone out the head now. Sleeping Beauty. I think it was Sleeping Beauty. Well, anyway, I had my spinning wheel there and I had so much people. So many people that came and asked about the spinning and inevitably they are so interested that they want to know where do you get the roving from, um, who colors the roving, what is the process involved with it and I actually ended up, there was one specific family that they just couldn't get enough facts. I sat for an hour speaking to them about the benefits of natural fiber like real merino wool compared to acrylic yarn and it was delightful the children uh, the children love it the the one little girl came and she said to me she wants to pedal the the spinning wheel but um it's a double treadle i have a double treadle and she came and she she sat on my lap and her feet could just reach my feet so her feet was on top of my feet and we sat there pad, um, treadling the spinning wheel while I was spinning the yarn and she was absolutely fascinated so yeah worldwide knit in public day the 10th of June I hope I can motivate you to get out and go sit somewhere where people don't expect to see someone knitting or crocheting or spinning or even weaving if you can whatever you want but bring awareness to the fact that fiber crafts are still very much alive and well. Yeah. Okay. So this week I published a crocheted hat on Ravelry. It's actually an old pattern that I never published. It was published in a magazine many years ago. 
and the magazine group has since closed down and when they closed down I got permission from them to take the patterns that I designed for them and publish them on Ravelry but um, I'm doing it as I have time because each one of them has to be translated the patterns were all in Afrikaans so the spiral beanie got out this week after somebody asked about it um, thank you to Alette Stale. She's my technical editor and my translator. She um, translated the pattern for me and I've put it onto Ravelry. It's a very nice hat. My daughter still wears her hat and she's now living in Sweden. And um, this winter, quite a few times when we were chatting on a video call while she was walking to school or whatever, I could see she had the spiral hat on with her hoodie over it. So um, a very nice pattern. Not difficult. I won't say it's beginner easy, but it's probably intermediate more or less. Yeah, it's got a, it's got um, front post double crochet in, but I think that's about the most difficult thing in the entire pattern. Yeah, and it's beanie time. So um, I've got a ponytail beanie design in my head, but I I haven't decided on yarn or anything for it. Um, We'll see when that one comes to light. This one is the Rebel hat that I did last year. And what's nice about this one is that uh, it's got a double a double piece here. This this ripped part is double. So it's very nice over the ears. It, it keeps the ears quite nice and toasty, this, this double bit here. Now just for interest sake, did you know that if you get cold... 75% of the heat that you lose, the body heat that you lose, you lose through your scalp. If you put a beanie on, you, you warmer. It makes a massive difference. And I know a lot of people, oh, but my hair, I will look like whatever. I, I had a friend who said she looks like a matchstick <laughs> because she was very tall. And um, she said she looks like a matchstick if she puts a hat on. And I couldn't be bothered whatever people think of me is none of my concern <laughs> that's the way I feel about it if I'm cold I put a beanie on I love the comfy cozy feeling of a beanie and let me tell you something all these years when I was shaving my head I used to sleep with a beanie in winter time it's the most comfortable thing ever is to knit but it has to be pure wool acrylic will not do the same thing acrylic is going to make your head itch especially when you don't have hair but if you sleep with a, a snug fitting beanie in the winter man you have a good sleep eh? it's absolutely amazing so yeah if you think i look like a matchstick or a car guard kudos to you i couldn't care it's cold <laughs> And um, we've been giggling about the cold this week. Um, my daughter said to us that uh, the people is so happy that it's summer now in Sweden. They get to 20 degrees and everybody is off to the beach. And um, for us, 20 degrees is lovely cool weather. <laughs> so my daughter in Sweden laughs at us being cold in the winter because they go to minus 18 and we normally don't even go to to zero but in summer the roles are reversed we can laugh at them in the summer because they get to 22 and they're all hot and bothered and we reach 40 without thinking much about it so yeah so we differ hey doesn't matter where you are in the world just um, enjoy the craft that's what it's all about Whatever you knit, whatever you crochet, uh, just make sure that the journey is enjoyable because that is what knitting and crochet should be. It should be a stress reliever. It should be, um, I call it a broom for my brain when I've got this knot in my stomach and I'm uneasy and I'm not in a good mood and I sit and I knit or I crochet, I can actually work through my emotions and think why am I feeling so miserable today what's bothering me why is it bothering me how am i going to handle this and by the time i put the knitting or the crochet down everything is better it's a very healthy relief from stress and anxiety and tension and depression for me and i know it's like that for many other people too so okay hopefully by next month 
this damn star stitch blanket will be finished and let me tell you it's gonna be a long long time if ever again before i will crochet star stitch again <laughs> yes how many star stitches were there do i have a calculator close by i don't there's 121 in a row and i've got 90 rows of daisies or stars so it's nine uh, is it 90 15 times 6 60 90 90 times 121 that's how many stars i've made in this blanket yeah no I'm, I'm finished with star stitch after this one for a long time for a long long time Okay, so I'm going to work on the blanket and hopefully finish it within the next week or two. And um, oh, the blanket kits will be for sale on the Afrique Yarn website from Moya. It's Moya that I'm working with, Moya Cotton. And if you buy the kit, you will get the pattern free of charge. But the pattern on its own will be available on Ravelry as well. It's a standalone one. Yeah. And then... Um, Cable me cozy, you'll see me when you see me. I'm not pushing it, I'm just enjoying it, and it will get done eventually. But once the crochet blanket is finished, my hands are itching to cast on this yarn. Yeah, I can't wait. Anyway, okay, great. You must have a lovely Sunday. I hope your Sunday is going to be slow and peaceful and enjoyable. And um, you must have a lovely knit in public day on the 10th of June. Please post photos of where you are. Post photos in the Ilona Slow Life Creations group. And um, let me know how you are and where you are. What are you planning to do? While we're having this video up, post in the comments and tell me what are you going to do on the 10th of June for Worldwide Knit in Public Day. And just for interest sake, also tell me in the comments, do you also feel the therapeutic value of crochet and knitting? I know many people do, but I always like hearing people's stories. I think it's because after um, Jekyll and Wort Jill, one and two, the two books that I published on the therapeutic value of crochet, I'm always interested in hearing other people's stories of how crochet or knitting helps them through trouble sometimes it certainly helps me so have a blessed month and i will see you next month be blessed